Divine Truth Theme Discussions Discussions between Jesus and Mary about specific topics and issues. This is session 14, part 4 of the discussion God's Laws of Forgiveness and Repentance, where Jesus and Mary continue to discuss God's principles and laws of forgiveness and repentance, focusing on the role God has and how God is and can be involved in our personal processes of forgiveness and repentance. The session was recorded on the 17th of April, 2018, from 10.30 a.m. in Wilkesdale, Queensland, Australia. I can forgive without God's help. (laughs) (laughs) Controversial statement. (laughs) Controversial statement. Let's talk about it because this whole session we're talking about how God is involved in our process of forgiveness. Um, So I wanted to pose a question towards the end of this session now. Can I truly forgive someone or something without God's help? Well, uh, I think it was in session three that we began this process back in session three, Mm -hmm. we said that forgiveness is emotional forgetfulness. Mm -hmm. In other words, you no longer have an emotional signature internally about what others have done to you. That's what forgiveness is. So you remember the events or the interactions, but no, there's no negative emotional response in you anymore. That's right. You've now... You now no longer feel hatred or anger or resentment towards the person who did it. It also is no longer affecting your life. Mm. That's it. That's the indicator Mm -hmm. that it's no longer affecting your life in negative ways. That means you've truly forgiven the particular event that would have otherwise caused you to not only be angry and resentful, but also to take actions that, you know, harm yourself or others Mm -hmm. in the future. Mm -hmm. So here we are, we're in this state of emotional forgetfulness. Mm -hmm. Now, The question then becomes, can emotional forgetfulness happen without God? The answer is yes, Mm -hmm. it can. Mm -hmm. You can emotionally forget what other people have done to you without God's help. Mm -hmm. You can. It's pretty hard, Mm -hmm. but you can. So I need to release emotion, just like we talked about in those first three or four uh, sessions in this series. I need Mm. to release emotion. I need to see the truth of what harm was actually done and release emotion according to that truth. Correct. So I have to know that for sure and get it right and then release emotion. This is all without God's help. So God's not telling you now. Yep. There's no, (laughs) it's just all. You've got to work it all out. Yep. Right. Detective work and, you know, analysis. Yeah. So it's going to be time. This is the path of natural love that I've talked about for the last. Like 14 years or whatever yes. it is, I've been yes. talking about it. <laughs> well, it's, you know, I've been talking about it then, but most people have heard it for 10 or so. But, yeah. you know, that's the path of natural love, yeah. having to do all that work yourself. Mm-hmm. Yeah, pretty hard work. It's hard, but a lot of people do it. Yeah. No, it takes a lot them of... well into the spirit life to actually Yeah, there's a lot of people who've usually. reached the sixth dimension of the spirit world who have done it. It's taken them 100 years or 200 years. Some of them it's only taken 50, but they've mm-hmm. had to be pretty dedicated yeah. to do it for every single thing. Yeah. Right, yeah. so it's pretty hard work. So to answer definitively, yes, it can be done, but it will be harder. Mm. Let's talk about just succinctly now some of the ways that having God involved makes it easier. Mm. So we can do it without God, but if we do it with God, mm-hmm. here's some things that God's going to help us with. Yeah. So let's look at it. God's help firstly. Well, the conscience helps me recognize what a sin is. Yes. If I don't have the conscience telling me what a sin is, how do I recognize what a sin is? Yeah. I'm going to probably have to have some pain and suffering and go, mm-hmm. oh, the pain and suffering is telling me mm-hmm. what a sin is. Mm-hmm. So yeah. that's going to be harder. Yeah. <laughs> Plus it's going to be more emotional because yeah. I've got more pain and suffering. Yeah. So, yeah, that's going to be pretty harsh. Yes. Number one. Oh. Number two, God's, you know, God's love shows me how to love myself. Yeah. What love myself means. So, uh, yeah. so imagine I don't know what love of myself means. Mm. Now I've got to work out what love is. Now, living in an environment like the world we live in, trying to work out what love of self really is, is pretty hard. Yeah. Because everybody believes something different about it. Mm-hmm. Most people believe you love yourself, you're up yourself, yeah. you know, or, or they believe if you love yourself, you're arrogant or whatever. Mm-hmm. But other people believe if you love yourself, you know, then you 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 are arrogant you know they they actually believe that's a good thing you know so there's also there's all these sort of uh, mixed messages that come from the world so you're not going to be able to rely on the world to give you any (laughs) accurate reflection about what love is 
Oh, so where do you get it, your yeah. where do you get your line of what your, love is? Your bar. Your bar. Where do you set the bar? Where do yeah. you set the bar? Mm-hmm. Well, most people don't know. Yeah. And you can only again go by pain and suffering. Yeah. So if there's pain, it must be I've crossed the bar. Yes, the bar. I'm <laughs> I've set the wrong. bar too low. Yeah. You know? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All right. So God, having God's help, it helps us to love ourselves. It also helps us to recognize truth. It helps. Oh, sorry. Go yeah, on. Oh, that's an obvious one, obviously. Yeah. You know, because the conscience, it, it be mm-hmm. through the God's God's connection with God, can now give me the truth. I can find out the truth on any matter. So it helps me recognize what mm. the truth is really rapidly. Imagine I can't. Imagine again. I've got no way of knowing. Yeah. What do I do then? Yeah. Like, so every discovery of every new truth will have to be an experiment mm-hmm. that could fail. Mm-hmm. And and you know what it's like if you're a scientist. You know, you have to often create hundreds of experiments and every one of them fails. Yeah. And you still haven't found the truth. Yes. Your life's life's work can actually be eliminating all the errors all the errors yeah. and still not find the actual solution yeah unfortunately yeah. there's many unsung scientists mm-hmm. in the in the, yep. on the planet who have spent their entire life finding all the things that haven't worked and then and then the next generation of scientists comes along can draw on all of that and say none of that worked i'll try this and boom first First cab off first, the rank. First, first, <laughs> first few times he finds yeah, the answer. Yeah. And then he's lauded as being the most <laughs> fantastic person because he's just discovered this new thing. And he's actually based his work on hundreds of failures yeah. that somebody else had to spend their whole life doing. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, not very good recognition of truth there. <laughs> but, you know, that's often the case. Mm-hmm. Uh, this is often the case in our own life. Yeah. If we can easily be find the truth, it's mm-hmm. going to make our life a lot easier. Yeah. yeah. God also helps us to be humble. And I'll talk to you in detail about how God does all these things um, after this. Yeah. But God helps us to be humble. And without that assistance, then we've got to kind of develop that humility muscle on our own. Yeah, well, we you don't know, have on, the benefit of the sensitivity. On the earth, we have the sort of the attitude, don't we? It's like, you know, I'm just as equal as everyone else. So I shouldn't have to listen to anybody <laughs> is a, a subsequent result of that. But when we compare ourselves with God, we go, oh, obviously God must be better than me. <laughs> so at least I have some level of humility when it comes to some listening. Some of us, it takes a long time to get to <laughs> of that course, point. But, but at least, you know, if I do believe in a God, I'll probably think God's better than I am. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Having God involved also helps us to forgive when we know that God's laws require it. Yeah, and this is a factor about God's laws requiring it because we um, obviously have some respect for God and God's laws now. The fact that God's laws require it, and this brings me into the next point too, that God's laws are obviously required to make us happy. Mm. So so this particular thing of God's laws requiring it and having some faith that it's to be happy, mm-hmm. then that's going to, uh, obviously going to motivate me to to actually go through the process. Yeah. So having this awareness of God's laws and that there's God's desire to be happy, mm-hmm. and that's why God created those laws, yes. is obviously going to help me, you know, go through the process of mm-hmm. forgiveness and repentance rather than avoid it. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, absolutely. Mm-hmm. Okay, well, now we'll quickly recap each of those those things. Sure. That, so we've contrasted now the the fact that we can forgive without God's help, uh, but, but it's, we're going ha- to be tough. Do without that long list of things we just mentioned. It's going to be tough, yeah. and and it is tough. Yeah. Everybody in the spirit world, in the sixth sphere, who's gone through it, prefers to not remember it. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, you know, you know, when you try to pull them back into the remembering the process. Frequently, the discussion doesn't go well because they just want to avoid the discussion still because there is sort of it has been a painful process, you know, and even remembering the process can feel a bit painful sometimes. So it's better to forget the process even after a while. That's how they feel Uh, because it is tough. It is a tough process. Yeah. Yeah, Which most people who who hear divine truth right at the moment are actually doing Mm. the tough road. Mm -hmm. They're not doing the easy road. They're doing the hard way. Yeah. And that's why most of them feel tired, exhausted, angry, bitter, twisted sometimes, you know, Mm -hmm. because they're doing it the hard way. Yeah. 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 We've got to understand that just because we think we're doing the right way, it's not necessarily true. If we're tired and exhausted, high likelihood we're not doing the right way. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. So God helps me to recognize sin. How does God help me recognize sin? Well, God can just tell me. 
<laughs> that's a sin. That's not. Yeah. <laughs> Isn't that wonderful? Like, so, so some of those things that we talked about in the in the first part of this session, the conscience and receiving God's love, we talked a lot about how that those two mechanisms help us to recognize sin. Yeah, it's like it's like what what would we do if we had with without God? <laughs> like it's like you have to engage in action because it because. You, even not engaging in action has pain. Mm -hmm. So you have to either engage in action or not engage, but then you've got to measure it, mm -hmm. the results. And you've got to know exactly so, what the, you know, the cause was of yeah, the effect you, you've you got. You've got to be a good there's scientist, a lot of right? Factors, <laughs> and there's a lot of things to eliminate. Was it that I did that thing? Or was it that I felt that thing? Was it that I didn't do that other thing and I did that thing? Which bit was the wrong bit? And yeah. yeah, like people in the spirit world who do this, it's almost like you've got a book, right? Yeah. And, and fortunately for most people, the book's in front of them in their soul, so they can see it at least. But, you know, th they can investigate. Is that a sin? Is that not a sin? What happened there? What mm -hmm. happened here? What happened there? What happened here? That must be wrong. I must change. Yep. And, but that requires a lot of hard work, you yeah. know. And this is what many of the people who we know are doing too. They write down, this is in, that's a sin, that's a sin, that's a sin, that's a sin, that's a sin. <laughs> you know what I mean? And, and sure, like it's one way to progress, mm -hmm. but it's not the easiest way. Yeah. If if you progress with God, you'd be able to recognise the sin straight away. Wouldn't that yeah. be great? Instead, you wouldn't have to have a book with you anymore. You go, oh, <laughs> what, what was that? Oh, that was a sin. Yeah. You know? <laughs> just straight away. You know what yeah. I mean? And and oh, I can't remember what the sins were. God, you know, like it's I, uh, my book's gone. You know. Yeah. No, like the book's always with you. God's always there. He, he's happy to tell you what your sins are. Mm -hmm. You know, he wants you to change. Obviously, he's happy to tell you if you want to know. Yeah. It's easier if God can tell you because you don't have to go through a process of experimentation and you don't have to be like a detailed scientist mm -hmm. to get through it all. Mm -hmm. See, every person who's progressed to the sixth dimension of the spirit world has had to be a detailed scientist in their recording and, and, and uh, understanding of information mm. in order to discover what's a sin and what isn't. Yeah. And even then they haven't discovered all their sins because mm -hmm. in the sixth sphere you're still sinning yeah. uh, in some ways, but yes. you're not sinning against people anymore. Yeah. And and people no longer in the sixth sphere sin against you either, but you're still doing other things, which we'll talk about later. Yeah. But but it, it's sort of like, it's such a, a, a time-consuming, difficult process. Mm -hmm. And any scientist who's done that on earth to discover a new truth will tell you. Yeah. It, it's hard work. Yeah. You've got to be dedicated, yes. right? Really dedicated. Yeah. And most people are not dedicated while they're on earth to do it. So yeah. they have to become dedicated after they pass. Yeah. So, but is it, so most people on earth do a whole heap of sins that they don't recognize, mm -hmm. pay for them for the first part of their life in the spirit world. And that's a painful process, paying mm -hmm. for them. Then they have to engage this scientific process of ke keeping track of everything. Yeah. And eventually they make it to the sixth sphere. Mm. Yeah. They're still not in a state of bliss. Mm. They've just made it to the sixth sphere. They've now got back what they could have had all the way along. Yeah. Which is being the perfect natural person, mm -hmm. perfect natural man or woman. Mm. Man, if God can help you, yeah. wouldn't that be a lot better? Yeah. A lot, a lot quicker. Like, you know, the things that I learned in the first century in a few years, people have taken thousands of years to learn without God's help. Yeah. Well, why would you do that? I don't understand why you'd do that. Mm. You know, you've got to be pretty dedicated to being opposed to God to mm. do that. <laughs> yeah, have those that like we spoke about earlier in the discussion, the resistance mm. and the justified resistance to God. Mm. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Mm. God's love helps me love myself. So yeah, how this, this does is an interesting this happen? Yeah. yeah. How does God's love help me love myself? Well, um, the way we're brought up on earth, we've got no love comparisons, mm -hmm. really. Like we can only compare with what the world thinks is mm -hmm. love and what and usually it's what our environment, our parents in particular, believe love to be. Yeah. So so we have a very poor concept of love. You know, our, our love bar, if you like, is quite low, you know. Or so, very distorted. And distorted as kind well. Kind of yeah. squiggly. <laughs> yeah, like love. <laughs> and love, love in some cases is thought to be this when it's when it's actually yeah. opposite. And not. It's, it's very confused. Yeah. And, and and in fact, using the word love mm. for it is is probably, you know, wrong, wrong. Yeah. We, we need to come up with another name, like imaginary mm -hmm. love or <laughs> evil like yeah. we've done or some some other word for it, because we because otherwise we use the word and then we think we know. It. Yeah. And this is a big problem. So you're saying basically um, 
each of us has a way of not loving ourselves, but evolving ourselves. Yes. Yeah. And we've got no idea mm -hmm. because we've got no comparison, yeah. no yardstick, no yeah. nothing to compare with. Mm -hmm. And so that's the problem, like, mm. you know, how do you, how do you, without God's help, find out what love is? Mm. You've got no one to tell you. Everyone else is usually in the same or worse condition uh, or slightly better, but not, not much better in condition than you are. Mm -hmm. So how would they be able to tell you? All you can do, again, is measure it by the pain and suffering you're in, mm. like, which is means you take an action that was unloving, pain results. So you go, oh, that was probably wrong. Then you take another action. It's almost like hit and miss. Sooner or later, because you're doing it this way too, you have the other disadvantage, and that is you start fearing action. Yeah. Which is what, what happens to a lot of people on earth. Even now, most people on earth are fearing action. Right? They're afraid to take actions because mm -hmm. they're afraid to get more pain. Yeah. Right? So, you know, this is what happens when everything's an experiment about pain. Mm. You, you eventually become afraid of taking any new action because it might cause another pain. Mm -hmm. All that could be avoided. Mm -hmm. If you can receive some love from God, you'll feel what love is. Mm -hmm. You'll know whenever somebody else projects a different feeling at you that it's actually not love. Mm -hmm. So now you have a comparison. You have a yardstick. You can, you can compare. This is going to help you mm. to be able to go, okay, what I'm getting from God is love. What I'm getting from them is not. Or what I'm getting from God is love. And what I'm getting from them is very similar in this case. Mm -hmm. So they're loving people. But how does that help me to love me? Well, so if you're talking about actions of other people, sure, I can avoid people who are clearly not well, loving towards me. Well, it helps me love. Yes, it helps it? me love others and it helps me identify love yes. in others or the lack thereof. Not, not, not just in others, in me. Yes. It also helps me identify what the feelings of love are. Yeah. Does that make sense? Definitely. So it helps yep. me identify all of those things. So then you're saying I can then analyse what feelings do I have towards myself? Are they loving or not? Well, we can go even further than that. Are my feelings towards myself the same feelings God has towards me? Yeah. There's my comparison. Yeah. You know, there's my yardstick. Mm -hmm. If my feelings towards myself are the same feelings God has towards me, now I'm loving myself the way God loves me. Yeah. Now I really understand what it means to love myself. Mm -hmm. If I don't have the yardstick, if, if, I, if I can't have, don't have something to compare with, example, if I compare with somebody else loving me, it's always going to have some kind of flaw of some kind. Mm -hmm. And how is that going to affect me? I'm going to think that's love of myself and do the same thing, yeah. but it'll be wrong and I'll get pain from it and then yeah. I'll be confused. Yeah. You know, there's all sorts of bad things that happen as a result of that. Mm -hmm. So what I love about, you know, receiving some of God's love is that you now have a comparison. Mm -hmm. You now have a yardstick. You now know when you're not loving yourself the way that God loves you too, mm -hmm. which is great because you can also see your own sins, if you like, against yourself mm -hmm. that you need to repent for. Yeah. One of them is your lack of love of yourself. Yeah. It's a big problem on the planet, lack of love of self. We do a lot of stupid things, not loving ourselves. Mm. A lot of harmful things to ourselves and others, not loving ourselves. Mm -hmm. So it helps me make that comparison. Yeah. Uh, so this is wonderful. <laughs> Without God's love, what comparison we have? None. Yeah. We, we've got nothing to compare with. We don't know what, what love is, really. We don't know what it means to love ourselves. We, it's walking around blind, mm. you know, when it comes to love of self. Mm -hmm. And then when we get a whole heap of pain, we don't know that that pain is the result of our not loving ourselves. Mm -hmm. Like we think it's from some other reason. You've done that for years. Yeah, I've done that for years, walking around uh, thinking that my pain is a result of some other reason than me just not learning how to love myself mm. properly. Mm -hmm. So that, that's, a, you know, that's pretty... Once, you, once you've received some God, of God's love, you go, wow, you know, my need to learn how to love myself is very important. I mm -hmm. need to stop relying on other people to love me and learn how to love myself. Mm -hmm. That's a very important shift. And without God's assistance, you won't make it. And is it only the mechanism of God's love that assists us with that? I mean, I feel so. Yeah. I feel so because... Without the mechanism of God's love, you don't have the feeling of being loved. So you have nothing feeling-wise mm -hmm. to compare it with. Yep. You only have ideas or concepts mm. or what I would classify as theories. Mm. And unless you feel it, you don't know. Mm. 
It's, it's a very interesting statement you've just made because really you're saying that in order to understand love, I must have an experience of it. Yes. There's no other way to understand love apart from the experience of love. That's right. So we're so lucky that there's a source of pure love in the universe, aren't we? Yes, that we can actually experience. Yeah. You know, the problem on the planet is that it's very hit and miss. Mm -hmm. You know, hum human love is very up and down, isn't it? It's like yeah. one moment they love you, next moment they hate mm -hmm. your gut sort of thing. <laughs> and or they love you on condition. Yeah, of exactly. Things, you, know, you do something that offends them and now yeah. they don't love you anymore yeah. or whatever. God's not like that. He's mm -hmm. consistent. You can feel the consistency of it. Once you understand that, you realize, ah, that's my standard for loving mm -hmm. myself. And that, that's a very important thing to mm -hmm. come to recognize. And, uh, and I'm still going through the process yeah. of recognizing that, you know. But without God's help, mm. like I would have, with the injuries I had when I first arrived here and this time around, I, I, you know, I'd be nowhere now, yeah. you know given the extent of the unloving treatment that I experienced at the hands of spirits and people, yeah. you know, I'd, I'd be nowhere now without that comparison. Yeah. Yeah. So it's a very important comparison to mm. be able to make and feel and then go, okay, that's my standard for loving myself. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Very good. God helps me recognize truth. So what are the ways that God helps me recognize truth? And again, this we're speaking in relation to God assisting us in the process of forgiveness here. Mm. Well, if we look at the process of forgiveness, one of the things that uh, is very, very important is to be able to recognize when there's something to forgive and when there isn't mm -hmm. something to forgive. Mm -hmm. Now, most people find this very, very difficult without God's help. And the reason why is because you always compare things uh, generally in favor of yourself. Mm rather than in, fa in the favour of other people. And you certainly don't compare things equally, ever, mm -hmm. generally. Mm -hmm. so, so when I say equally, where, where the other person's well-being is just as important as yours and your well-being is just as important as theirs. Mm -hmm. You know, it's very hard to actually m make that comparison given the emotional injuries that are on this planet. So what we have a tendency of doing is we have a tendency of blaming other people for unloving behavior when their behavior wasn't unloving. Mm -hmm. So for example, a good one is, let's say a person ignores you, but you perceive them ignoring you. Now, most, a lot of people get pretty upset about that. Mm. They've ignored me, you know, and so forth. Get really upset about that. Is the person allowed to ignore you from God's perspective? Mm. The answer is yes, they are. They have free will, they're allowed to ignore you. Mm -hmm. So the fact that you're getting upset about them ignoring you is your problem mm -hmm. from God's perspective. Mm -hmm. It's an unloving thing in you, right? Mm -hmm. There's a truth there, but I won't see that truth. I will think them ignoring me is their problem. Yeah. I will think that I have a right to be <laughs> acknowledged. Acknowledged. Yeah. Right. That's what I think. Yeah. Right. And I will often, in anger, express that. Mm -hmm. to the person who's ignoring me, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. Sinning while I do it yeah. and causing more pain and suffering for myself while I do it. Mm -hmm. So there's an example of how God's truth, if, if I have to discover it, would be very hard to discover. Yeah. But it, if God can tell me it, mm -hmm. ah, nobody has to do anything for you. Yeah. God tells me that. Like every day God tells me that. Mm -hmm. Nobody has to do anything for you. I keep reminding myself for that all the time. Yeah. No one has to do anything for you. Mm -hmm. right? Anytime you have an expectation that somebody else does something for you, you're out of harmony with love. Yeah. Every time. Yeah. That helps me avoid a lot of pain and suffering. Mm. It does. Mm -hmm. It also helps me to know what I need to forgive. It also helps you to avoid a lot of sin against others. So, so avoid a lot of repentance. Yeah. Of course. Yeah. Yeah. In other words, with forgiveness, it helps me see that if someone ignores me, I don't have to forgive them. Mm. There's nothing to forgive. They're allowed to ignore me. Mm -hmm. If I da blame them for ignoring me, there's something I have to repent for. Yeah. I see that straight away, right? Yeah. That's how it helps me. Mm -hmm. So knowing, like being able to hear God's truth on any matter is going to assist me greatly, but it's going to be very hard to determine by myself. Yeah. Because there's a lot of times when I think you should do things that you don't have to do from God's perspective. Mm -hmm. And there's a lot of times I think you shouldn't do certain things that you should do from God's perspective. Yeah. Yeah. So the average person doesn't want to hear the truth, for example. Mm -hmm. But God, from God's perspective, it's only right to tell the truth. Yeah. 
every time. Right? A lot of people on the planet feel it's okay to not be transparent. It's okay to cover over the truth. Not lie, they call it, mm -hmm. but not be transparent either. Not fully disclosed. Yeah. From God's perspective, that's wrong too. Yeah. But I know that because of the connection with God. Mm -hmm. But if I didn't have a connection with God, I would just accept the world's view of that. Yeah. And then every pain that I have about that, I would continue having because mm -hmm. I can't cure it. Yeah, so what are the ways, let's uh, just get back to our question, what are the ways that God helps me to recognise truth? And we've covered these a lot, haven't we? Yes, yeah, so I've mentioned the importance of God doing it. Yes. The way is very simple, mm -hmm. obviously the direct way. Yes. Conscience. Yep. Yeah, so the indirect way through other people telling me truth, mm -hmm. the, the way the law is exposing the truth, yep. and the way my soul has been designed to respond to the truth. Yep. Right, they are all the ways that God's doing mm -hmm, it. Mm -hmm. but, but in the end, if God didn't do it, I would find it really hard to recognise some of these truths that I know, now know to be true. Yeah. Without God's help, very difficult to mm -hmm. discover them yourself. Bearing in mind that everyone around you believes the same lies you believe. Yeah. So, you know, it's going to be very hard mm -hmm. to discover them. Mm -hmm. mm. Yeah. God helps me to be humble. <laughs> so how does God help me to be humble? Well, I suppose a lot of this, um, there's a number of ways, you know. Obviously, we've looked at the four primary ways that God helps us. Right? Yes. The law has helped me be humble. Yeah. Because every time I have pain and suffering, I know, ah, lack of humility, mm -hmm. I'm fighting. I'm yeah. trying to do something against law. Yeah. You know, I'm not, I'm not mm -hmm. doing anything good here. You know, so the law helps me be humble. Yeah. My friendly help can help me be humble. To okay. remind me. To remind me that I need help. Yeah. That, that I can't do it alone. I can't recognize things alone. Yeah. That, I, that, I, that it's so hard to discover truths mm -hmm. by yourself, you know, in a vacuum. Yeah. Very difficult to discover truth. Yeah. The direct help that God gives me through the conscience, mm -hmm. right, helps me be humble. Like God can just say, you're not humble. <laughs> <laughs> but also, helps um, me be humble. The, well, these two direct ways, God really rewards humility through yes. giving us truth and giving us love. So that is a, that's a sort of a reward process that we go, well, yes. every time I'm humble, really more good truth, stuff happens. Yeah. More truth comes to me yeah. and more love comes to me. Yeah. And also I feel that. Yeah. So it's not only something I see, but I feel. Mm -hmm. In addition, all these truths come to me very rapidly when I'm yeah. humble. When, when I'm not humble, nothing comes to me at all. Mm -hmm. So that teaches me to be humble. But also I get to see the relationship between myself and God, right? which I, I feel the most important thing. Mm -hmm. And that is that, you know, you start to recognize God as this infinite being with an infinite amount of anything you would ever aspire to have. Yeah. And you are just a finite creature mm -hmm. with limitations. So you never sort of exceed your, um, there's always some modesty yes. in, in yourself mm -hmm. because you, you know that no matter what you know, mm -hmm. and even if what you know is more than anybody else knows, yeah. you still know that no matter what you know, mm -hmm. even at that point, it's still nowhere near what God knows. Yeah, And, and, and this... that helps you remain in a humble state. Mm. And. Uh... This sort of speaks to what I was um, talking about at the beginning of our discussion today about prayer and my experience with sincere prayer and developing sincerity in prayer is that mm. there's this there's this difference between, you know, airing your problems with God and your resistance with God in a way that isn't humble and in a way that is. So when, when I do it in a way that's not humble, there's no way that I'm really respecting God's authority or respecting that God might know it differently than me. Yeah, but basically that's just having a tantrum with it God. It is, yeah. yeah. Whereas when I have this quality of humility, it's more that I'm coming to God and saying, dude, I'm not getting this and I, I recognise I, recognize I have these problems and I recognise you don't. And I'd really like your help with this. Yeah. Yeah. And and also I recognize that you know how I need how I can fix these problems. Yeah. Whereas I don't. You yeah. know, th there's a lot of things we don't know. Yeah. And and particularly if we're not emotionally connected to it, there's even more things we don't know. Yeah. Even though we think we do. Yeah. And and to be in the state where you recognize you don't know and that you just need to be humble and accept the process that God's leading you through. Because you remember God's like trying to take our hand and lead us through 
a labyrinth of damage. Mm -hmm. And he's trying to do it in the most uh, successful as well as the most gentle way. Mm -hmm. And if we can trust that and be mm -hmm. humble about that, mm -hmm. then we're going to get through it much more rapidly and with the least amount, you know, the less amount of pain yeah. than we would otherwise. Yeah. Every time we maintain an arrogant state, we get into this state where we think we know better. Mm -hmm. And thinking we know better compared to an infinite God who knows everything is just a stupid state, to be <laughs> frank. It's like stupidity to the, yeah. to the maximum. Yeah. And, and so, you know, once, once we recognize our position in the universe, mm -hmm. which is basically as one of God's creations, although we are the highest of God's creations, we also know very little when mm -hmm. we begin. Mm -hmm. Once we recognize that, we are able to have a humble relationship with God where we're reliant on God, not to be responsible for us, mm -hmm. but rather to lead us to self-responsibility. Yeah. So, so God then leads us through yeah. a place. And because we're humble, we follow. Yeah, it's, it's, it's interesting, isn't it? You know, there's one state where we're completely self-reliant. I'm doing it on my own. You are to blame. Rah, rah, that's not humble. No. And then there's another state where I go, God, I give up. Could you just fix everything for me? You are the big, you know, knower of all things and you should just help me. And oh, you know, some guy died on a cross and I think that that should you, mean you just take it all away or, or whatever. Total lack um, of humility and responsibility. Yeah. And so that that's not humble either. No. There's this beautiful thing that you just talked about where, the, okay, God, can you help me to learn self-responsibility? Can you help and me to learn everything? Can you help me to, yep, fix everything. all my injuries and what love is and what truth is and what's, yep. you know. But also help me learn everything about the universe I yeah. live in and help me yeah. to learn, like, I want to be your student Yeah, is probably the attitude, isn't it? Yeah. A student doesn't ex ever think that he exceeds his teacher. Mm-hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. A true student doesn't yeah. ever think that, yeah. you know, yeah. not many true students on the planet because yeah. every one of them wants to exceed. They yeah. compete with their teachers yeah. oftentimes. Yeah. So with God, you know, there's a teacher that knows an infinite amount of everything. Yeah. You can't go wrong, really. With can't go wrong. That teacher. With yeah. that teacher. Yeah. So be humble mm -hmm. and accept what the teacher is trying to tell you. Yeah. That that is the underlying principle here. Mm -hmm. And it's uh, unfortunately not not frequently engaged on the earth you know mm -hmm. frequently it only happens well it's not even frequently engaged in spheres up to the sixth sphere in the spirit world even yeah unfortunately yeah so so that's where why there's still a lot of difficulties and a, a lower amount of happiness for those people too yeah because they haven't been humble with god mm. Mm. god's desire is for me to be happy <laughs> so here i wanted to ask you about a specific statement that we had in the outline mm -hmm. and that it says it is easier to forgive when I know God's desire is for me to be happy. Why is that? Well, uh, see, the average person who attempts the process of forgiveness believes that they're letting a person who harmed them off the hook. Mm -hmm. In other words, they would really prefer to see the person who harmed them to get harmed as much as they personally have been harmed by them. Mm. Or, if that all made sense. Yeah, it can make sense to me. <laughs> yeah. Or that the person who harmed them is punished. Will be punished, or that the person who harmed them, if they forgive, will somehow feel empowered to hurt them again. Or... Yes, a lot of times there's that fear, isn't yes. there? Yes. That the, that if you forgive somebody, they can hurt you again and again and again, and you and don't want that to happen. So what you do is you say, "No, I'm never forgiving them." Yeah. That's going to pr protect me mm. from further harm from that person. Yeah. Ironically, it's a completely opposite to yeah. that, but, but that's what people believe, mm -hmm. which is very false, right? So the question is, how does God's desire for me to be happy help me get over that? Yeah. <laughs> or how is knowing that God desires for me to be happy help, help me get, me over, get over that? that? Yeah. The way it helps me get over it is that, okay, God's basically asking me to forgive, right? Mm -hmm. Now, he has a reason for doing it. Mm -hmm. The reason isn't about letting the other person off the hook. The reason is more about releasing from you emotions that harm you and stop you from being happy. Mm. That's the reason. So, so, but is it the case that even if I don't know that, even if I don't know that that's God's reasoning, 
if I'm in a humble state and I know God wants me to be happy in and I know God's asking me to forgive, then I can almost make it like a faith-based decision to Hon forgive. Honestly, until you go on through forgiveness, you don't know anyway. Mm. That's not the point. The point is here having faith in the fact that God's desire is for me to be happy. That's so if right. God requests forgiveness of me, then I should do it just because... His reason is to make me happier. Yeah. It's not for some other terrible reason. Yeah. Like to expose me to more damage. Mm -hmm. Any of those beliefs that I have to, that, that forgiving someone exposes me to more damage or forgiving someone will harm, we get let them off the hook. They're all false beliefs. They're fears mm -hmm. appearing real. Mm -hmm. They're false beliefs, fears mm -hmm. that I need to get rid of, right? If I have a feeling that God wants me to be happy, I'll get rid of those fears. I'll go through them, get rid of them, because they're wrong. Yeah. They're out of line with mm -hmm. truth. They're not the reason why God wants you to forgive. Yeah. Why God wants you to forgive is so that you will be happier. Yeah. That's why. Yeah. When you forgive, you'll be happier, and then you'll yeah. realize that's the reason. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but it won't happen until you forgive. Right? You won't be happier until you forgive. Yeah. But you need, something needs to give you some faith that forgiving is worth it. Yeah. Right. So if I already have developed um, some kind of relationship with God or some kind of faith that God wants me to be happy and then I feel God wants me to forgive, then I'll be much more likely to engage in a forgiveness process, yep. even though my fears might be screaming at me not to. Yeah, your fears might be saying that person's going to hurt you more. Yeah. Total, total crap, actually. Yep. When you recognize and go through forgiveness properly, you won't allow that person to hurt you more. Yeah. That's how it is. So that's wrong. That's a yeah. false belief. Another belief might be, you know, if I'm, le I'm letting them off the hook, crap, total, mm. total crap. The reality is God's laws never let them off the hook. They have to go through a process of repentance and forgiveness just like you have to. Yeah. Right. That's how God's laws work. Never going to let them off the hook. Mm -hmm. Right. So you're not letting them off the hook because you can't let them off the hook. Yeah. It's not even in your power to let <laughs> yeah. them off the hook. God's laws will do what God's laws do. Yeah. Right. You will never be let off the hook, neither will they, unless you engage certain processes that are emotional processes of forgiveness and repentance. Yeah. That's the way it works. Yeah. Right? They're, they're going to come to a realisation of what they did at some point in the future towards you or how they damaged you. They will. Mm -hmm. It might take a thousand years, but eventually they'll do it because mm -hmm. the laws are going to demand it of them, just like it demands it of you. Mm. Right? It's so when you realise all that, you realise that all these false beliefs you have about forgiveness are wrong. Mm. Therefore, yeah. You need to trust that God want, wants you to be happy. Go ahead and go through the process. Yeah. Let yourself feel the process and go through the process and you'll get there. And once you get there, you'll be glad you did. Yeah. But only once you get there, because mm -hmm. before then you'll have all these false beliefs to deal with and all this stuff about how they hurt you to deal with and all these emotions to do with. But once you get there, then you'll be happy, Yeah. which is what God wants for you in the first place. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, so it's very, very important to have that faith that God wants us to be happy mm -hmm. and that faith will definitely help us forgive. Mm -hmm. mm. Yeah. God helps us to repent. So obviously we just spoke about um, how involving God in the process of forgiveness helps us to forgive. So there was, we mentioned five different things. God helps me recognize sin. God helps me love myself. God helps me recognize truth. God helps me to be humble and God wants for me to be happy. So when God asks me to forgive, then I'm going to be happy. Mm. Um, I know I can have faith in that. So obviously everything we said there also, God gives us all of those things to assist us in the process of repentance as well. Yes. And even probably to a greater degree, but we need to probably add a few things to the list. Yeah. God helps me recognize love of others, mm -hmm. right? Which mm -hmm. needs to be added to the list because yeah. repentance involves love of others. Yeah. God helps me recognize that others deserve to be happy. Mm -hmm. Not just me, yeah. but others deserve to be happy. Yeah. That's God helps me recognize that others need to see the truth. Yeah. And, and the truth that I've harmed them is one of the truths they will need to see. Yeah. And God helps me to see them to see my sin, mm -hmm. <laughs> which is a great thing that God helps them to do. So, so the reality is all these same things we discussed to the detail we discussed just briefly yeah. before all apply to the recognition of repentance, the need mm -hmm. to repent as well. God helps with all of the th processes of repentance, even more 
then God can help with the processes of forgiveness. And the reason why is we need more help mm -hmm. to repent mm -hmm. than we do to forgive, mm -hmm. because it is harder to repent than it is to forgive. Is that because often there's some kind of hurt within us that we are um, trying to get over? So we already want not to be trying to get to, over, trying to avoid, not trying to avoid. We're not trying to get over the hurt or avoid it when we're in a state that we, we, that we do things wrong to others. We're engaging the hurt. We're not trying to avoid it. We're wanting to hurt others because we feel we're hurt. Yes. We want to harm others because we feel we've been harmed. But we don't really feel that properly. We want to retaliate rather than feel we've been harmed. I don't know. I think most people do feel that. Like, you it, know, not release it. I mean, they don't release it, yeah. but they feel it. They, they don't experience it. They don't hurt. experience the, the fact that they want to, but they do want to and they go ahead and do it. <laughs> do you know what yeah, I mean? Like, yeah. they go ahead and do it. And, and the, the, also, the lack of repentance comes from this feeling of superiority oftentimes. Entitlement. Entitlement, demand. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of quite damaged emotions that engage uh, bad behaviour towards other people. So, so yeah, and I guess I was trying to say we, we have beliefs that justify the harm of others. That is a much more correct way of saying yeah, it. We yeah. have beliefs that justify the harm of others when we do something we need to be repentant for That's right. whereas when we need to forgive sometimes we don't even have beliefs about why that was the right thing to have happened to us in some cases we know it was wrong and it hurt and That's that right. makes forgiveness much easier but when we have beliefs that cause us to justify the harm of others then yep. we need a lot more help i understand that that's yeah. right yeah so so the reality is god uh, like the process of repentance is even more difficult without god's help mm. than the process of forgiveness is mm -hmm. and the, the reasons are quite clear because we often have very strongly held personal opinions yeah. that we're right and other people are wrong yeah we're right to demand things we're right to hurt them mm -hmm. we're right you know we have all these internal justifications all generally quite a lot of them based upon rage even yeah or if not rage anger and hatred and other kinds of very dark emotions mm -hmm. drive a lot of bad behavior towards other people along with very high expectations that our addictions get met yeah which drives bad behavior with other people yeah. now they are quite extreme ways of sinning from god's perspective and we're going to need a lot of help mm -hmm. to deal with them and any person who's been through the process of repentance knows mm. that the help they need with repentance is far higher than the help they need for mm. to forgive so so what i see a lot of people doing is that a lot of people on the planet do get to the process of forgiveness at certain points or other mm -hmm. but very rarely ever touch any points of repentance yeah. on the you know while on earth yeah and and it is a major thing to have to discover the points of repentance that a person needs to engage and to do it with God's help, much easier, because mm -hmm. God can just tell you. Yeah. <laughs> Here you go again. Yeah. You know, there's another thing you need to <laughs> repent for. So, so while all the discussion we've had up to now applies to repentance as well as forgiveness, yeah. the process of repentance is going to be much more difficult without God's assistance. Mm -hmm. And as we learn in our next question, actually, we cannot ever complete it without yeah. God's assistance. All right. Let's <laughs> move on to our next question. Hmm.